Good morning. My hope and prayer for you today is that you are blessed as you visit with the Father today and that his, He visits with you. We're going to be talking about praying effectively for the next couple days. And the whole idea here is that we look at James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18, because He gives us several forms of prayer packed into a couple quick little verses. And so the idea here is that we understand a couple things about prayer. And so here's what James says. If any of you is among you is suffering, then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? Then let him sing praises. If any one of you is sick, then he must call for the elders of the church, and they pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. If he's committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray to one another. Pray for one another and that you may be healed. The effective prayers of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man with a nature's ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the Lord brought forth rain, and the earth produced fruit. So what's happening in those quick couple verses? So first of this, this one. Effective prayer begins with the idea of, I got to do it. I have to do it. Is any among you sick? Then he must pray. Part of the issue is here, we sometimes forget to pray. We get so busy with what's going on, we forget. And so Jesus helps us here, as we discussed earlier, we must always pray that we not faint. Why? Because prayer is the perfect vehicle for us to be in the Father's presence and to help Him understand what's going on within us. And so we forget. The next one is this, that if anyone cheerful, let him sing praises. What's the idea of praises? Praises are nothing more than saying thank you to God. And they can be musical praises, they can be verbal praises, but the idea is that as we sing praises, as we give these praises, what we're doing is we're actually doing another form of prayer. And as we do this second form of prayer here, we understand our motivation. Our motivation in prayer is not always to get, but to hear. Our motivation in prayer should sometimes be to thank. And so that's where praise comes in. Because what we're doing is we're saying, God, I have a grateful heart, and I'm giving my grateful heart to you today. Then he goes on and he says this, that we have to understand that confession of our sin is important. And we'll talk about that a little more later. But the idea here is that all, conf all confession is, is our agreeing with God and understanding our own brokenness. And our own brokenness, how much we need the Father. So think today, in your own life, where is there brokenness? Where is there heartbreak? Where are those things that you need healing over? And as you pray those things through, as you think those things through, give them to the Father. Why? Is any one of you sick? Is anyone of you ill? Any one of you under any type of infirmity, crisis, let him pray and then confess. Psalm 5117 helps us here. It says this, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, these you do not despise. James helps us here as well. He says that when we're this way, God gives a greater grace. He's opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. What's that about? It's about admitting the fact that I must go before the Father and have a conversation. And I keep encouraging people that all prayer really is, is a conversation, an intimate conversation, with the one who loves you, the one who knows you. I remember trying to learn how to pray and you know and being w willing to talk to God and how fearful I was you know is God going to understand is God going to hear me all of those questions that come in our minds was God just says let's talk it's not let's talk no it's let's have a conversation come let me hear your heart unburden yourself 
Why? Because when we do that, we're able to sit down and relax and have the conversation. I remember many nights as a young man struggling in high school going, oh man, is God listening? Oh God, oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll do it anyway. Until they learn just to be still and talk to the one who loved me. It was that simple. And as that happened, suddenly my prayer life just began to open up. And many times in my life, I've gone before the Father and just sat there and listened and prayed. Why? Because effective prayer begins with my motivation. I want to be with the Father. Effective prayer begins with the idea that I want to understand and know the Father. I want to seek His face before I seek His hand. Now, what does that mean? It means to be in the Father's presence, to hear Him, to understand Him before I ask for gifts, before I ask. Because, again, it begins with my motivation. And then there's the whole idea, then, of being in the Father's presence, seeking His face, means that I get to surrender, giving over to Him, and receiving and living under His authority. Because effective prayer begins with my motivation. What do I think? Am I here for my own methods, motives, or am I here for the Father? Lord, speak into my heart today. Lord, help my motivation to be with you, to seek your face before I seek your hand. Now, often we quote scripture, and often we do that. And that's fine. But the idea here is, when I'm praying, I am confessing, I am surrendering, I am giving myself to the Father that my actions may match my words. If I'm a person who believes in prayer and acts in faith, acts of faith, then I'm going to walk with the Father there. Prayer gives me that opportunity because of my motivation to be with the Father. Is any of you sick? Pray. You have a need? Pray. Are you enjoying life cheerful? Express yourself with words of thanks to the Father. Profess what you believe. That's all this is. Don't make it hard. Understand, God wants to talk with you today. No matter what's going on in your life, whether you've got to rush off to this meeting or you've got to go catch a flight, hopefully, or you've got to do all these other things, the Father just says, talk to me today. Why? Because He has great and wonderful things in store for us if we just have a conversation with Him. Precious Jesus, we thank You for Your life, Your death, Your resurrection that leads us and make, gives us access to the Father, the precious gift of knowing and being His, that we may speak directly to Him. These things, Jesus, we pray in Your holy, Your mighty, and Your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.